Hi everyone, Shannon here with Mixed Media Minnesota. Welcome to my video. Um, today's video is going to be a little different than what we've been doing. Um, I'm super, super excited to get out some mediums and do a little mixed media so with you guys. So um, I think I'm just going to put all of the footage in one video um, and I'll probably speed some areas up or you know cut out when I'm using my heat tool and stuff. But it is nice to just see something like this in one video. Now, I was inspired by Marta at Marami Small Art. I will share a link to her channel in the description box below. Amazing, amazing, talented woman. Um, I've been watching her for years. So if you haven't, I'm sure you already have, but if you haven't, click on that link and be ready, grab a cup of coffee or something because you're gonna be stuck there for hours watching videos because she is so talented. Um, okay, so thank you for the inspiration, Marta. Um, now, what I did here and what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is a project like I saw her do on Break a Blink, Break a Blink page, and one of our new ones. Um, and I was thinking we could do this and make one of these, you know, a bunch of these or whatever. And then they can be added into a journal very easily. Like I have this piece of paper here. It's a thicker card stock. I think it's a minte paper. And I have a bunch of these ones. And so I use them because I really like the back. You could write on it. So depending on how um, the water and stuff reacts to the paper. And you know if, if, if we're able to leave it and write on it. We could just tuck it in a pocket. But what I did this one for was... I cut it down to five inches across by eight inches tall and I thought when it's dry and done what I could do is I could put it on a page just as decoration you know like sometimes you have a book page or something that maybe it's you know you really like this side but then this side not so much so so like this side you know I really want this in there but then this side just has some writing or something you can always add that you know over top of that and then it's pretty so we're gonna try that. So that's what I made this one too. Again, I cut it five by eight. And I'm gonna leave this side so that if it doesn't get ruined, it can be rolled on. Okay, I have my clear gesso. This is Art Basics Clear Gesso. I know that that needs to get stirred up. I have um, a tube of white gesso, and this one I have tons of different brands. I'm not real picky with them unless I'm looking for a heavy gesso, but I don't really need a heavy gesso in this case. Um, Deco Art, it's by. Uh, Americana. It's just a premium white gesso. I have my little spatula. I have some water. I have a couple brushes and I have the black um, Woody by Stabilo. It's number 880 um, slash 75. I don't know what. No, it's not the number. 0714. I love these and I haven't used it for a long time. I also grabbed out. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, but I just pulled it out. Um, it is the Little Brian uh, brand paint stick and this is the gold and these are also really really fun um to use and you can get these both on amazon the stabilo and the little brian i mean for pretty cheap i got a set i think for 15 20 dollars and i think there's like i don't even know there's a lot of different colors in there so i'm going to set that aside for now um i also went ahead and grabbed out some just scraps now she marta does um like 10 different backgrounds and then she's you know gonna use those backgrounds in her videos to break a blank page um and so there's the what you can use for background is endless i just grabbed some craft paper some music paper encyclopedia and this is just old newspaper so what i'm going to do is just simply go ahead and um stick them down and i'm going to you're not going to see most of this but you might see some of it you know what i mean so all right, so I'm going to open my clear gesso, and I'm just going to use that as my adhesive. Now, it's white, but it will dry clear. So, let's see here. And the clear gesso is like a primer, so that when we come back later with our other item, you know, things and water and different things on them, you know, it's primed. It, it You can move color and stuff on them. So I'm going to turn this this way. I hope that doesn't bother you guys. And like I said, we're not going to see a lot of this anyways. I am just going to kind of cover the whole, the whole page with it as I go because I want the whole entire page to be primed. You wouldn't have to do that, I don't think, but I don't want that edge on there. Okay, and then just going over top of that. It's kind of like Mod Podge, but um, the clear gesso is what you what you want to use if you're going to use other mediums on top. I don't know a whole lot about Mod Podge and how that works. I personally cannot stand the smell of it, so if I have to use it, it's it's desperate. Um, 
and to me it always ends up sticky and I don't like that so yeah actually we're just gonna use that end anyways it's it's something I would throw in the trash so go ahead and just not even think about it and just be putting these things on here I don't know why I had to rip it or you know that straight edges will be just fine I think and if they wrinkle up and stuff, I mean, I'm okay with that too. I don't want them all to be straight edged though, so I am gonna try and make a goofy shaped one here. So, I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm, I'm so excited to be playing with this because I haven't played with mediums for so long and I really miss them. I, I love it. I think if I had to pick just one thing you know, not junk journals, not all this, you know, doing it all different things. It would definitely be like canvas art and this kind of thing. I, I haven't done it for so long because it's so time consuming and it's hard to do videos with that because so many steps in that process, you know, you need to go and let it dry. And yeah, you can use your heat tool, but a lot of times I like to let it, things air dry. Sometimes not, but I like to let them air dry because then I know they're dry. I'm impatient and so I'll just start um doing something and it's and it's not quite dry and sometimes you do get different you know different effects from that too so so yeah I wish I wish I could just you know do a video with it I'm so scared to try because what if you know you never know you can start with some when you're doing canvases and mixed media kind of stuff for me anyway, I'm not gonna speak for everyone, but for me, I find that what I imagined, you know, when you're doing a project and you imagine something, what, it's, what you want it to look like and whatever, um, and then you do it, and by the time it's finished for me, it ends up being so completely different than what I originally had imagined that it's, yeah, I don't know. I think I think you guys understand what I'm saying. I think everybody probably has, has that issue. I mean, it's not even an issue because a lot of times the final, thing ends up way better than I could have imagined if I were imagining it to be that way. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure that I have clear gesso over all of this. And this does dry, you know, pretty decent amount of time, in a pretty decent amount of time. But um, I'm still gonna go ahead and heat over the top of it. But actually, I think before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wipe that off, close that up, and then I'm gonna grab the white gesso and I'm probably just going to use my fingers with this so I'm going to stick this in the water here now I'm just going to squirt it right on here probably should have grabbed some plastic which how convenient now after I did that I didn't even look for it all right so this is almost dry just this side is a little wet yet so now I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of I don't want the color to show, so I'm trying to get rid of that, you know, of the of that page. If I see some of the text and stuff in, in what we had glued down on here, I'm okay with that. I just don't want the color, so. And we'll probably come back after we get our focal point on here and we can add some more. Um, add some more weight just so in spots if we think it's necessary. I mean, sometimes... When you watch Marta, you'll see what I'm talking about. I can't, I don't know, I'm just, I don't know how to explain it, but sometimes it just needs that to pop like your focal, focal point or something, so. These little wrinkles here, I'm okay with that. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to dry this. And then um, I might add a little bit thicker on the edges here. I don't want to see that background of what that, you know, what was on that paper but I don't want it to look like it's just white. You know what I mean? I don't know. So keep talking here and <laughs> playing with it. And I just, I love it. My fingers are in gesso and I'm happy. Okay, so. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dry that and then I'll be right back. Now I did just take a dry baby wipe and I'm just kind of wiping a little bit of that gesso off. And I was, while I was drying, I was thinking, you know, the, the white gesso is a primer too. So I guess, I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. I just, I just know if you don't have some kind of gesso on it, the papers and stuff that you're using, they just absorb the water and the colors, you know, and, and then they don't move. If that's what you're going for, they're not going to move very much for you. So, all right. I have this gesso up here. I hope it doesn't dry out before I need it. Um, set that over there. Where's Okay, so here is what I want to use for my focal point. Um, this is just one of the punch outs from the, what is it? Uh, 49 Market Countryside, um, the flower cutouts. And I did use this uh, in one of my kits a couple months ago. So um, let's see here. Yeah, I really like that. And so I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. Okay, let's plop that on there. And hopefully I can get it where I want it. It's such a pretty piece. It's gonna go right there because that's where it went, okay. And I'm just gonna press that down. I don't wanna rip those tiny, tiny little plant stems there, flower stems, whatever. Okay, I think that's kind of stuck on there now. Okay, now that I got that on full of gesso here, I have, I'm gonna grab another brush. And yeah, the clear gesso. Just over top of that. Probably just do a light layer of the whole thing, you know, because I did use that baby wipe and kind of wipe some of that off. So just to make sure that it's all sealed, I guess. Oh, goodness, okay, hold the bottom and then get the top. So, again, dry. Okay, so now it's it's pretty dry. I hope it's dry enough. Let's see. See how that clear gesso, I mean, you don't even see it over that. Like Mom Pod, you know, you get that little shine. You don't get that with the clear gesso. I love it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to, how this thing works, you can draw on it and, and then move it with water, or you can just use your brush and the water and then just wet the end of the the pigment here. You'll see. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around the flower. And water will reactivate this, so that's really dark. I'm hoping it's not too dark. I'm wondering now if I should have used a brown, but we can we can we can fix that. Worst case scenario is it gets white gesso, gesso or something around it. I don't know. We'll see. Just trying to get 
I want to start first by just doing like this side of everything, like maybe a shadow, like maybe the sun would be coming from this way. If that makes sense? I don't know. You might go around the whole thing. I don't know yet. Okay, so we have that. So now what I'm going to do is just get water on my brush here and just move that around. See how that moves? You can get that. Move it around. I'm gonna hold it kind of tipped up here. I know um, it does, if I remember right with this one, it does dry um, lighter too, but I got a lot on there. I think Marty uses an intense uh, like watercolor maybe. You could use watercolor and do this as well, you know. See now I'm just kind of going to go and lightly pick up some of the darker with my wet brush and then just kind of Put it around, you know. I don't want it everywhere, um, but. See how that water just moves it and you can lighten it and stuff. We can go in and pick some of it up with a with a baby wipe too. So just like a little bit, of, it just kind of gives a little dimension, I think. dark lines around there. Okay, I'm going to try and pick a little bit of that up. And it, it kind of leaves like a little texture too, your baby wipe does, so be careful of that. I don't mind so much. Okay, now see how you kind of have that like shadowy look. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. You see, you can draw on it too with this, you know, right like right that, and then you can go in and you know move that around. make little darker in spots I do I like I personally like the dark um, not too dark you know but I just I don't want a whole lot of it to be dark so just I'm gonna a little tiny adding what I just took off I guess so it's kind of it's fun to just play with you know if you don't like it you can just pick it up and and start over you know with this part of it so You know, I do, I think I have a problem with overworking it, you know, and I got to learn to just let it be. It, it's fine, you know. Um, I think now I might want a little bit of dark. I overthink most things, most things in life, though. So... I think I think I have a little bit too much down here, so okay, I'm just gonna do that. Let's see here. So yeah, that's really pretty. 
Okay, now I'm gonna dry this again and then we're gonna play with the white gesso again. Okay, before I do the, the white gesso on here, um, it's a little bit damp, so I'm a little nervous to use my pen. I have um, the Paper Studio, it's a 0.5 millimeter fine line pen. It's water resistant, archival, acid free, pigment ink. Okay. Now this is this is definitely uh, something that I picked up from watching Marta's videos. It's when she goes around the things, you know, and just loosely kind of adds some of that doodly look to it. You know, that's really cool. Yeah, that's not. It's too wet, I think so. myself a little you probably can't see what I'm doing can you <laughs> cornering it off to kind of give myself a little bit of a corner okay okay we had our white gesso on here so I'm just gonna use that now I put a little bit on my finger and then I just kind of rub it off so it's not a, like a whole big blob um, when I start because I don't know exactly how much of it I want where. And now I think I, well here I know I want to cover that. Um, just gonna, a couple spots, you know, like. And I pr probably should have waited to do the outlines, you know, got too much on there. So just keep rubbing it in. I don't want the white on the flower, and that's what's happening, so. It's not dry either. <laughs> Definitely go watch her videos. She's the professional at this. I did get some white on there, so let's see here. I'm gonna do a really bright white, kind of up here. You just play with it until you like it, you know. Right now it's kind of not, I'm not really liking it, so I'm just going to keep playing with it until I'm like, okay, that's, that's okay. And but see that um, I need some, like a, like a bold white, like a solid white. See, where heavy gesso, I think for me, is easier to do this part of it, but it moves a little less. It's like thicker but it's kind of mixing with the, um, the stabilo pen, so it's turning gray anyways. <laughs> so. I think a little here and then I think it'll be close to, I mean, not, not that it's great or anything, but close to what I'm kind of envisioning. So get this off my finger here. And now I'm gonna add some splatters. So I should have just kept that close. Um, I do want black too. So I'm gonna use that pen again, but let's see, what am I looking for? The gesso and I need something to cover up my flower because I don't really think I want splatters on my flower so I'm just gonna kind of loosely cover you know cover a little bit of it no that doesn't work
I know, this is seriously ridiculous with how many pieces I have, but that flower is goofy shaped. Okay, so we're gonna put that. Now I'm gonna grab my little brush here and I'm just gonna get a bunch of water on my brush and then I'm just gonna pull some of this over here and make it really wet and see if we can get that to work. Um, otherwise I do have like sprays and things we can use, but I just wanna get all the lumps and bumps out of there. You want it wet, but not like watery, if that makes sense. Okay, so. Now you're not really gonna see a lot of the white on here. I think after it dries, you might, and then in the darker, like gray areas. Okay, so that's enough of the white. And now the black, I'm gonna just go ahead and over top of this, get all the white off of there. And get a lot of water on here, like a lot of water. Okay, and then I want the black more towards the flower is what I was thinking, but I guess it really doesn't matter. So let's see what that looks like. Now I'm just gonna move this. And there's, yeah, the black ones look really cool. I don't even know if you can really see. Yeah, you can't really see the white ones. What about gold? Before I put that off, we should have did gold. Um, actually, do we want to do the edge in this? Let's let's do it. Let's see what happens if we... And I'll probably stitch this on the page, you know, in the journal. But let's just see what happens if we add a little bit of gold to the edge of this. You know, kind of got a mess of this, but... Yeah, if you can, if you can find where you can just order, you know, one, you know, individual colors of these, the gold is a definite must, I say. I use the gold a lot. I don't want it to be like a lot. I just want to see a little hint of it here. And I wish now that on the flowers that we put on there, I wish I would have kind of went around them with, with this, you know. But it'll be fine. I do like the gold on there. I think now we need gold splatters though, I think. Um, I have some, let's see here. That's silver. I know I have gold. I just gotta shake it up. I have this little Windsor & Newton ink and this is gold. I just really gotta shake it a lot. And now, what can I easily grab here just to basically, again, <laughs> Lock out the bulk of the flowers, maybe. Maybe a little piece there. We're gonna try that. Okay. Do I have, let's see here. I don't. Shake this up. Now, this is ink and it's liquid, so I'm gonna wash this brush out, rinse this brush out. I guess, can't really wash it, I don't have a sink right here. But I'm gonna wipe that off, now it came apart on me here, it's just a cheap brush. Okay. Shake that up. Hopefully we can open it. Come on muscles, do your thing, there we go. Doesn't really put, put some water there and I mean is it is it, I don't know, can you guys see it? I can't see it. Definitely need some more water here. Is it just drying that fast or something? Okay. The gold is a little thicker, so we're gonna we're gonna call that good. It is what it is. We will be pleasantly surprised when we're done, hopefully. 
Oh yeah, okay, I can see him. Now, you guys see that? A little, just a little bit of gold in there. So I think that's really pretty. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I just have one of these little um, label things. You, it's by Dymo. And um, be kind, I just wanna put that on there or something. You know, any little word or something, so. Where do I wanna put it, do I want it? I think I wanna cut it apart, but I'm going to peel the back off. Take a little scissor here. I probably should glue these. I'll see how they do and then if they come apart or something or come up, I can always glue them, so. What do you guys think? I don't think my dueling is that great, but I think it's really cool. Um, I do kind of wish I would have, you know, like if you look really close here, you can kind of see like the book page and the music notes here, you know, different things, so. But here's a good example. Um, you can see where I added the white gesso, it toned down that gray and it kind of makes this pop now, it's like brighter around it. So I think I am gonna go ahead though and just do some little squiggly lines around this just to finish that right off. Okay. What do you guys think? It's pretty amateur, I guess, but I mean, I think it's cool. It was a lot of fun. That's, that's, that's what I, I needed to do. And so I'm happy with that because I got to play and get my hands messy and use some of my mediums and make something that I can use. So, so there you go. You guys have a great rest of your day. Um, thank you for watching and let me know what you think. Um, would you like to see a little bit more mixed media or no, not really your thing? Um, let me know. Um, you guys take care and we'll see you soon.